Hey guys, this is Holland Chambers Biology coming to you with your genetic drift lab. Now keep in mind, I am actually doing this entire lab for you, so you don't need to do anything at all. Just simply follow me, write down the data, and please make sure to download the handout before you actually start watching this video. Okay, so genetic drift, keep in mind, is the change of allele frequencies in a population. So if per chance, something happens to them. Say a hurricane or a tsunami, a tornado um, comes over and per chance alters the original population, that is genetic drift. And this also includes human impact. And so this can lead us into what's known as the founder effect and um, the bottleneck effect, which will actually be in your um, corresponding lecture with this. Now what I did is I took a bag of eminence um, and I just simply um, isolated them out, okay, um, according to what their colors are, and I wrote down um, how many of each of those colors um, that I had in that bag. So I want you guys to take your lab, which you guys have downloaded, and on the very first where it says original mainland, I want you to write down the, these numbers. Now the numbers are 25 blue, 19 green, 15 orange, 13 yellow, 12 red, and 11 brown. So your total is out of 95. So we have 95 eminents that I originally started with in my population. Now the second column in your data table asks you guys for a percentage. So you are gonna figure that out. Simply take your phone, okay? And remember the percentage is the item divided by the whole. So 25 divided by 95 is what percent? And remember to move the decimal over twice. So once you guys figure out those percentages, then we're going to reenact genetic drift. So I, for example, am going to be the hurricane, okay? So I'm gonna come in with my big hand and I'm gonna grab just a handful of these specific organisms. And I'm gonna drop them off over on this island over here on the side. So all of these guys, remained on the mainland. And the ones on the islands are the only genetics that will then be able to interbreed on the island. The question is, has their genetics changed from the mainland and will the mainland also change as well? All right guys, so after counting the M&Ms on my island, I would like for you guys to write down what our data is for the island. Now the island is your second data table. It says island population after the storm. Okay, so after the hurricane hit, what's our um, their new population stats? Well, for blue, write down five, green is two. Orange, you have a six, yellow is five, red is zero, and brown is four. So you have a total population now of 22 organisms on this new island. So if these organisms were never on the island to begin with, then this is known as a founder effect. They have founded this new specific habitat. Now they're all going to interbreed. Now the next generation to come, notice here based on our data, that there is no red alleles. Guys, there's no red DNA. There's no genotype for red to be passed on to those children. So therefore, red has now become extinct within that population. Even though the mainland still has red, red is no longer on the island. And if the island is not conducive to some of these other colors, say the island is not conducive to yellow, okay? Predators see yellow, pick them out, all of a sudden those are going to disappear. This is all part of natural selection. So the best suited for that specific island is going to survive and therefore their alleles are going to change. Now, for the third data table, if you flip the page over, okay, you'll see a third data table. This data table is the mainland population after the storm. So this is real easy guys, just minus the numbers. So if you have five blue that went to the island and you originally started with 25 on the mainland, how many do you have left now on the mainland? Well, you have 20. Okay, so it's a pretty still a big population of blue. Whereas say, you know, with the red zero on the island, 
and then 13 on the mainland. So therefore, that alteration is what's going to drive evolution. Keep in mind Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, one of the five factors that you need in order to evolve is no migration, okay? So in order to not evolve, sorry, take that back, rewind that, okay? So in order to not evolve, you cannot migrate. So the fact that a chance event happened here means that Hardy-Weinberg principle has been broken. Migration is happening because of genetic drift, whether the species likes it or not, they've been moved to a different area. And because of that, evolution will occur within the species, okay? So based on the data that I've collected here for you guys, um, again, make sure that you guys are analyzing the percentages because on the bottom of the second page, you guys are going to be creating a visual graph based off of this data analysis. And I want you guys to visually see what is actually happening from the mainland to the island and then the effect that the mainland got because of that storm. On the very last page, you guys are going to be answering some questions that deal with genetic drift, um, gene pool. So again, make sure to um, watch my lecture on um, the evolution recap and the gene pool in order to help you guys with the, these questions. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, again, when you are finished with the lab, please make sure to turn it into the Google Classroom for credit um, for this second part of evolution. Thanks for watching.